This is Twit. Incoming, incoming, and ICOM will be there this weekend, and that is the Perseids Meteor Shower. Let's take a look and see what this meteor shower this weekend is all about. Well, those of you going to the Albuquerque, New Mexico Ham Fest this weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, on Friday night and Saturday night and early Sunday morning, you're going to see a meteor shower that is called Perseids. And uh, Perseids will be coming in at about one every 45 seconds, and they will create an area up in the E-layer of reflection off the uh, meteor trails. And as the uh, Perseids uh, give off their trails, radio signals will bounce off of the trails. And not only will you might be able to see things, but in a moment we'll tell you how you can hear things. So Perseids, Perseids is our largest meteor scatter uh, contact potential. It all occurs up in the E layer of the ionosphere. And uh, when Perseids hits, that's when the real excitement comes up. But we've got to dodge the moon in the same time because when the moon comes up, uh, it's going to mask some of the Perseids. So as you can see here, Perseids is the biggie. Now, these are zingers. Uh, they uh, won't be easily seen if the moon is uh, uh, somewhere up in the sky. The moon is only going to be uh, about one-third of being full, so we've got a pretty good chance of seeing a lot of uh, zingers way out there. But the biggies are the fireballs, and these are the ones that on VHF can extend a communications range to five and six, 700 miles, and uh, during the communications exchange, you give a signal report and you say your grid square and uh, be as quick as possible because uh, when these big fireballs hit, they're only going to give about 10 or 15 seconds of radio communications for DX. Now, for those of you with the ICOM gear and other gear with a uh, screen like this where you can look at the waterfall, you'll see signals come and go. Sometimes you'll only hear just an echo. And technician class operators make noise on 28400 because that's where everyone this weekend is going to be parked, hoping to hear some faint signals coming through. A dipole, it'll work fine for hearing Perseus. But again, you're only going to hear a couple of words. Uh, sometimes we get a real good bounce, but normally Perseus is going to give you about 500 to 700 miles range to another station. So we hope all of you will get out there and tune around. If you got a three element beam, aim it toward the northeast. And again, start listening right after darkness hits and start looking at that time because once the moon comes up, it won't affect radio conditions, but it will affect you being able to see Perseids. The very best time to see the meteor shower, of course, is just before the sun comes up when the rest of us are sleeping. And uh, again, another zinger on uh, the six meter band, 50.125, and of course on the two meter band, 144.200. So I guarantee this particular ICOM IC9100 is going to be very busy. And by the way, you can do it fine with an FM transceiver as well. I like tuning into an unused weather station up at 162 megahertz because when the meteors go over from Perseids, you're going to find that weather stations will come out of nowhere, be strong for about two or three seconds, and then they are gone. Well, weekend after next. That's, of course, the Huntsville Ham Fest. And Don will be there with Young uh, Ham of the Year. Don, that's going to really be exciting for you. That's Saturday and Sunday, the 19th and the 20th. Uh, it's also the same weekend as the Lighthouse Weekend. So those of you out there on the water uh, with your Lighthouse operation, best success. And the excitement right after Huntsville, uh, only about uh, maybe 100 miles away from Huntsville, is going to be the solar eclipse. And the sun is going to do some amazing things. Now, when we look at the sun, it's 400 times bigger than the moon. But the moon is 400 times closer to Earth. And the sun is 100 times bigger than Earth. 
and Earth is four times bigger than the moon. This means that the sun and the moon appear the same size to us here on Earth, and it's just ripe every 40 years or so for a total eclipse for those of us in an area that has been predetermined. Now, this is Tracy, WM6T. He's up in the mountains, but he's always got his scopes all set on finding where the best spot to be. So only a 1,000 miles away from here in Southern California, we're going to take the communications van up to an area in Idaho. Thanks, Tracy, for leading us on this uh, uh, fun journey. So we're going to be taking along a lot of radio communications gear in the van because we're going to be in an area of totality. We'll have about 30 to 40 minutes before total and another 30 to 40 after totality and a whopping two minutes of complete darkness. And uh, we're going to take down the uh, three-inch coil that we have here on the back of the van and put a big uh, five-inch coil. That's the high Q antenna. And we're going to be doing a lot of communications on 75 meters on 7250. Back to those folks here at this house taking care of the house and making sure that we can stay in touch as we uh, head northbound. So the big five-inch coil is going to cut down on losses and hopefully give us a good signal. But most of the time, we're going to be listening and listening. And you can follow our tracks uh, beginning uh, about a week from now uh, by going to APRS. Don uh, W6GPS is going to have us uh, being tracked. I think we've got everything all tied in there. Once we get up to our secret spot up in Idaho, uh, we're going to set up uh, the ICOM IC9100. And we're going to tune in. Uh, WWV during totality and see if we can maybe pick up on 5 megahertz uh, WWVH out in Hawaii. And we're going to tune in uh, uh, the uh, shortwave stations that uh, Don has heard on. And uh, we're going to tune around and see if we can meet other hams for about two minutes during totality. Now, what occurs is, is that uh, as the sun uh, begins to uh, get... Uh, uh, blocked by the moon, or people say the moon takes a small bite out of the sun, um, it will uh, allow those lower frequencies that are normally absorbed by ultraviolet radiation during the day to magically become alive. And we're going to check and see how long it takes for those uh, signals to come alive. Tracy's going to bring along his heli craft, and we're going to look at the scope display as well. And we encourage all of you, whether you're in totality or not, to try and tune in, if nothing else, AM clear broadcast channels. And uh, you can probably Google those. Don can probably tell you hell. But uh, you can Google those and tune in AM radio stations via Skywave for a couple of minutes during total totality or maybe 80 or 70 percent. So it's going to be fun for everyone in the United States. Now, this is our microwave setup on 10,000 megs. No, nope, we're not going to bounce a signal off of meteors this weekend nor uh, off of uh, sunspots uh, two weeks from now during the eclipse. But we're going to listen to sun noise and see what happens when the moon covers the sun. And we'll see how that noise drops down, which we think it will even though the sun at totality will still have a ring of fire around it. They call that the diamond ring, and it's majestic. Well, at least that's what they tell me, because I've never seen it before. We'll also have a beam antenna, and we're going to see if we can uh, get some uh, good signals on the beam, uh, either before or after or during the eclipse. And we're hoping that up in Idaho, as well as other parts in the country where you may be going, uh, that we don't have an overcast sky or fog or rain. But even if we do, uh, it's uh, certainly going to be apparent as things get darker and darker. And then during that two minutes, you're going to find that your WSPR stations are beginning to uh, uh, see your signal and coming up on the computer uh, much further than you would expect ground wave. And it's going to get cold. It's going to drop 10 to 12 degrees during totality. And you'll be able to see all of the stars come out and shine brightly for the big two-minute uh, full eclipse, uh, thanks to uh, uh, this uh, one-in-a-million uh, operation of the sun and the moon. And here you see, now that the eclipse is uh, beginning to fade away, 
radio conditions should get back to normal. Sunlight will get back to normal. And uh, Tracy and Gordo uh, will be back to normal. And we just encourage all of you that if you're uh, watching it, be sure and wear your approved glasses. Not dark glasses, not welding goggles, but actually approved glasses. And as Valerie showed you, uh, things get really dark uh, when you have these glasses in place.